Well, it's a pretty great day out there right now. Some places having a little bit of shower and rainfall activity back up over the mountains. But for us here, had some showers and thunderstorms move through in the overnight hours. Just a few clouds left over. They're trying to break up a little bit. We'll see a little bit more in the way of some fog develop. You can see some of the rains that are up into parts of Allegheny County right now. They've had a heavier cell that's died out just a little bit. And a few back out into Ash County around West Jefferson. They've had some heavier rain there, too. These are starting to dissipate as they move off to the north uh, with time. There is a flood advisory for portions of Ash County. Uh, and portions of Allegheny County for a little while as they've got some of those heavy rains in place. You can see the amount that we've had in the last 24 hours down and around the Troy area, Montgomery, Moore County, and also up into areas of uh, Stokes County where they've had some heavier rains in excess of two, uh, close to three inches in some areas uh, over Stokes County and back out towards Watauga County. They've also had some uh, activity where they've had some high rain amounts and everybody saw a little bit of rain at some point during the day yesterday. We've had a little mid and upper low out to our west. That's what's bringing in all this train of moisture over the past couple of days. It'll weaken just a little bit as we go through the day today so we can lower our chances for showers and thunderstorms as we go into this afternoon. But if we do get some of those cells to develop, uh, they could have some heavy downpours in them and then flash flooding. Still a probability as we've had so much rain over the uh, course of the month of August. Any damaging winds or severe weather uh, would be in the low category for later this afternoon. Visibility may start to deteriorate a little bit more as we go through the morning hours. We'll watch for that. There is a fog advisory until 9 o'clock for the triad. The temperatures right now 71 in Winston in Salem and Lexington and Ashboro. It is muggy out there for sure this morning as we get on into later this afternoon. Scattered shower or thunderstorms possible, but not as plentiful as they were yesterday into the mid 80s for a little bit later on this afternoon. Some clouds around tonight, maybe a little bit of fog, partly cloudy, we'll say 70 for the lows where we'll start tomorrow morning. And then as we get on into the afternoon tomorrow, some isolated showers and thunderstorms about high temperatures into the mid 80s once again as we get on into Sunday afternoon. Well, here's Laura. It's a tropical storm. It's going to move across Puerto Rico. It's got winds at 40 miles per hour moving to the west at 21 miles per hour. If it stays over the open water, it'll stay a little stronger, but it may weaken a little bit as it goes over Hispaniola as we get into the next 24 hours. Gets out into the Gulf as we get into early Tuesday morning, possibly making landfall across areas of Louisiana as we get on into the day uh, late Wednesday afternoon and into the day early on Thursday as possibly a Category 1 hurricane. We'll watch for that, although the models have dispersed a little bit and are not in great agreement on where it will make landfall once it gets out into the central Gulf of Mexico. Then there's Marco, a tropical storm, winds at 45 miles per hour, a little stronger than Laura. It's going to move in between the Yucatan and Cuba today and stay out over the open waters. It's moving a little bit slower, too. We're also watching this little activity that's been out over areas of uh, uh, off Africa. We'll watch for that as we go through time as well. We'll watch Marco continue. It may make landfall as we get into uh, late uh, Tuesday night and early Wednesday, possibly making a Texas landfall as a tropical storm. It does not look like it will make a hurricane uh, or become a hurricane at any point in its lifetime. Time. That remains to be seen. And again, even the models on that are a little bit in discrepancy at the moment. Mid 80s as we go into this afternoon and uh, a chance for a shower, a thunderstorm, but not as good of a chance as we had yesterday. Mid 80s tomorrow. We do get hotter later this week as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, upper 80s to around 90. Thursday and Friday, we may have some tropical moisture in here. It all depends on what these storms do. We'll watch them for you.
All new this morning, Winston-Salem Police investigates a call about shots fired in the city that happened on the 1200 block of Turton Street. That's just off of Peters Creek Parkway. Now, police say the call came in last night just after 730 and they stayed on scene until early this morning. We have not heard any word yet about injuries or if any arrests have been made in connection to this case. Moving east to the Gate City and happening now, Greensboro police say they need your help finding the man behind a string of sexual assaults in the city's southeast side. They happened reportedly in the early morning hours of August 11th and the 13th. Police say the victims voluntarily got into the suspect's car and then were violently assaulted both physically and sexually. Investigators say these incidents are similar to two other assaults back in June. A Davie County woman is facing charges after deputies found dozens of animals living in unsafe conditions. Investigators say the animals included horses, many horses, dogs, cats, pigs, chickens, ducks, lizards, an opossum, even a fox. Shepherd's office, the sheriff's office says they were all found in a home on Highway 801. They say the fox is not a native species. Firefighters had to ventilate the home before deputies could even go inside. 44 year old Jolyn Hicks has been taken to the hospital. And you're looking live right now. Beautiful sunrise coming up over Myrtle Beach right now. That's real nice. Clouds always make it a little bit prettier. Here's the beach forecast for you. Nags Head will be in the upper 80s this weekend. Chance of a shower or thunderstorm today, Saturday for Topsail Beach and Sunset Beach as well. The best weekend day will be tomorrow with temperatures into the mid 80s for the southern beaches. You're watching WXII 12 News. A young boy remembered by the Triad community will tell you the events you can get involved in this weekend, even today, in memory of Cannon Pinnett. 
and government funding getting funneled into North Carolina. We'll tell you what we know about who the disaster declaration aims to help. Hi, I'm Jeff Rossum. Coming up on Rossum Reports, we've all heard about the problems at the post office, so we wondered how long does it really take to send a package and a letter across the country? What about UPS? What about FedEx? We're pitting them against each other. It's the Rossum Report Shipping Challenge. The results next. Maybe that's a good reminder. Oh, I need to go to the post office today. Got to mail a birthday card. Got to mail some sort of event card. Get those in the mail today. You're welcome. This is your official post office reminder. Things you didn't even expect to get in WXAI early this morning at 6.30 now. I'm Meredith Dutz. Thanks so much for staying with us. Dave Aiken in the house tracking the tropics and the triad. You're a busy little bee. <laughs> I'm to have you do a few things for me if you're out running errands later oh, yeah, on today. Totally. We are tracking the tropics uh, and we'll start with that as we uh, talk quickly about the uh, weather right now and then we'll get a little deeper into the tropics later on. Uh, Marco and Laura, these are the two people or two names that we're watching for right now. Uh, Laura, tropical storm. It's getting ready to move in across Puerto Rico as we go through the day today. It's got winds at about 40 miles per hour. Marco's got winds of about 45 miles per hour. Two is a tropical storm. It's going to move in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba and stay through the straits there before it gets out into the Gulf as we get on into a little bit later on this evening. Uh, both of these storms will get out into the Gulf as we go through time uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours. We'll talk more about them in just a little while. Had a few showers and thunderstorms move through the area in the overnight hours last night through the triad in the Guilford County and Alamance County. Now just watching a few showers and uh, some heavier cells that have died down a little bit over the past 45 minutes or so through Allegheny County. Now pushing, in, pushing into areas of Grayson County and Southern Virginia at this hour. Um, there have been some flood issues up here earlier. There are no watches in play for it right now, but watch for some localized flooding if you're up in those areas uh, this morning. Uh, visibility right now, we've got a dense fog advisory until 9 o'clock this morning for uh, the triad and points south. We've seen visibilities two miles in Lexington, three miles in Reedsville right now. Temperatures, it's muggy outside, uh, upper 60s and even some low 70s across the region. Warmer and muggier this weekend, both today and tomorrow into the mid 80 scattered showers and thunderstorms not as plentiful as they were yesterday or the day before but we'll still see the activity at about 20 to 30 percent through the weekend and we'll watch the tropics and talk more about Laura and Marco coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you so much Dave looking ahead several communities here in the dryad will honor Ken and Hinnett this weekend. Five year old little boy from Wilson was shot and killed while riding his bicycle. His neighbor charged with pulling the trigger. A memorial ride is planned in Winston-Salem today. That's set to happen rain or shine. Registration starts at 8.30 this morning. There will also be a vigil in Wilkesboro at 8 tonight at the Commons Pavilion in Main Street. Another will be in Mount Airy tomorrow afternoon. And all of this morning, a study shows at least 20 million Americans will face eviction by the end of September it's next month. Researchers say that's due to a combination of things, including high unemployment numbers and the expiration of the additional $600 of unemployment benefits. Plus, eviction moratoriums expire for nearly half the state in the U.S. this month. Now, that means people can now be kicked out of their homes if they don't pay rent on time. Also new this morning, we've learned a court ordered President Trump to pay Stormy Daniels legal fees. It's the wrong video. We'll have that up for you in a second. We do know he'll have to pay the adult film actress more than $44,000. It's to reimburse her for the fees from her lawsuit surrounding her non-disclosure agreement with former Trump attorney Michael Cohen. She says it was to keep her quiet about her affair with President Trump. He denies that affair ever happened. Now at 633, from funding issues to new cost-cutting policies, the United States Postal Service is struggling to get mail and packages out across the country. Our chief national consumer correspondent, Jeff Rossin, has an experiment to show all of us how this is affecting mail delivery times. Hi, yeah, we've been reporting on the chaos at the post office. Your mail could be sitting in a bin somewhere for days, maybe even weeks, which is so troubling because so many of you depend on it for critical things like medication. So should you send your next package through the post office? Are FedEx and UPS any faster? What about price? We're about to find out. It's our Rossum Reports Shipping Challenge. The complaints are rolling in. I got bills that need to be paid and I can't pay them because I can't get my mail. State to state. From Cupertino down to Los Angeles, up to San Francisco, got scanned in, got scanned out, and disappeared. 
People are livid. I don't care if I have to go to the post office and pick it up. Just give me my mail. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start our experiment with plain old letters, regular mail. I went to the store, I bought a thank you card for my producer, Sarah. I am here in Florida. Sarah is up in New York, so I filled it out with her address, which I'm not gonna show you, and I'm gonna mail it. I'm gonna come here to the post office and mail this one, then I'm gonna go to FedEx and UPS and mail the others. We're gonna check how long it takes to get there, putting on my mask here, how long it takes to get there, and how much it costs. Let's start with the post office, here we go. I'm sending it as regular standard ground mail. Let's see what happens. 55 cents. Now, let's try the other guys. Okay, let's do UPS. UPS charges me 11.61 to send my little card. Okay, time for FedEx. Similar price here, too. Okay, so just shipped it here at FedEx. It cost 11 bucks. Sarah, they're all heading to you. Sarah checks her mailbox every day and the results are in. Check it out, Jeff. All three letters are here. Okay, first up is the one from UPS. This one costs us $11.61. Let me see what's inside. Oh, nice little card, thank you guys. This one took four days to get to me. Okay, next up is the one from FedEx. This one costs $11 for this small little thing. Um, this one also took four days to get to me. And lastly is the USPS, cost 55 cents and also took four days to get to me. So all three letters took four days to get to me, but USPS save a lot of money. Okay, those are the letters, but what happens when you want to ship a package? Our producer Dave from our powerhouse, her station, KCRA in Sacramento, California, packing up three identical boxes with hand sanitizer, wipes, and face masks, shipping them to me in Florida, again using UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. And again, we're using the standard ground delivery. So how long will they take to get across the country? Let's find out. Okay, so the packages that Dave sent me from California here to Florida have arrived, and I can tell you for all of them, UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service, everything's fine, so nothing was damaged. But there's a big difference with price and how long it took to get here. So let's start with UPS. Dave paid $14.50 at UPS to send this. It took six days to get across the country, six days for UPS. FedEx costs a lot more money, $22.53 to send this, $22.53, and it took 10 days for FedEx to get it here. So longer than UPS, 10 days for FedEx. But USPS took the longest, the Postal Service. Cost him $13.60, so it's not that far off, right? $13.60 for the Postal Service, but it took a whopping 11 days to get from California to Florida. So the USPS, clearly the slowest in this. We reached out to the Postal Service, UPS, and FedEx. The Postal Service saying, we have begun by vigorously focusing on the ingrained inefficiencies in our operations. We will aggressively monitor and quickly address service issues. UPS says, we had a typical delivery time, but due to coronavirus, we have suspended the UPS service guarantee for all shipments. FedEx telling us that because of the pandemic, it's seen a temporary service delay for some packages. Best advice, if you want to send something, especially a package, you should assume it'll take a while, like a week and a half or more, no matter who you use. Back to you. Jeff, thank you. Governor Roy Cooper has signed a state disaster declaration for counties damaged by a tornado earlier this month. The severe weather was actually caused by another natural disaster. Remember it well, Hurricane Isaias. This order provides more help to people in Bertie and surrounding counties whose homes or businesses were damaged or destroyed like the ones you see right there. Now taking a look at 638 and back in the triad, Dave Aiken is tracking our weather and a possibility for some rain. Yeah, I don't think the possibility would be quite as high as it has been the past couple of days, Meredith. But there's a chance we could see some scattered showers and thunderstorms across the area as we go on into a little bit later on this afternoon, mainly in the heat of the day. We'll take a look at the radar for you right now and just kind of give you an idea of what's happening uh, really across the state. But most of the activity for any rains right now are up over areas of uh, the mountains and the foothills and areas of Allegheny County, 
Gracie County, southern parts of Virginia at the moment, where they've had a little bit more in the way of some heavier rain cells up there throughout the overnight and early this morning, even a little thunderstorm activity. They're starting to die out a little bit. They are moving off to the north, but they could lay down a good amount of rainfall in a pretty short period of time. Temperature 70 right now uh, in Greensboro and Reedsville and Mount Airy, 71 Winston-Salem, Lexington and Ashboro at this hour, 68 up at North Wilkesboro and temperatures in the low and mid 60s up in the mountains at this hour too. As we go on into a little bit later on this afternoon, we'll have to watch for that chance for a scattered shower, thunderstorm, more of a typical type forecast for summertime. We have those scattered uh, activity as we go on into this afternoon, 85, 77 in the mountains, a better chance for showers and thunderstorms there. Well, this is Tropical Storm Laura, winds at 40, moving to the west at 21 miles per hour. This is Marco. It's going to move between the Yucatan and Cuba and get out into the Gulf a little bit later on this afternoon. It's a little bit stronger, 45 mile per hour winds and moving at a little slower north northwest at 12 miles per hour. We'll watch the tracks of these storms as we go on into the next uh, 24 hours or so. Here's your forecast as we go on in through the day today. Uh, 85 for our high a little bit later on this afternoon and we should be partly cloudy, maybe a little patchy fog tonight. 86 for tomorrow, chance for some afternoon evening showers and storms. Isolated chance on Monday and Tuesday. We do warm up upper 80s to near 90 as we get into the middle part of the week and we may see some tropical moisture in here by Thursday and Friday. We'll watch and see for that. Thank you, Dave. Next on WXI 12 News, a birthday to remember. It's an update to a story we've been following for more than two years in just a few minutes. Plus, a pool float for those who don't want to be out in the sun. Yep, what you're looking at, it's a real thing. We'll explain why this silly looking design could actually be some help for some people. Hey, that's why we're here to help you. Stay with us at 641. You made it to the weekend.
seconds before 645 on your Saturday morning. We have an update for you to a story we've been following for quite some time. A local immigrant says she's filled with hope and excitement this morning. Minerva Garcia is finally a resident of the United States. Our Margaret Johnson has been following her story for nearly three years. This is the news that Minerva Garcia has been waiting to get for a very long time. I'm feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling great, huh? I'm free now. I'm feeling free. <laughs> the green card making her a U.S. resident popped up in her lawyer's email this week on Minerva's birthday. She got it Friday morning. Yes, thank you, God. A federal judge granted Minerva's residency petition over a year ago. The card should have arrived within six months, but the coronavirus pandemic caused delays. A few weeks ago, her lawyer sued Homeland Security to get the ball rolling. It paid off. Yes, it's paid off. So, you know, it's unfortunate that you have to file a lawsuit against the federal government to get them to do their job. But apparently that's what it requires. Minerva and her three children have lived in Winston-Salem over 20 years under fear of arrest and deportation. She left Mexico afraid for her safety and to get medical help for her oldest son. This green card gives her freedom she thought might never happen. Thanks to friends and supporters, they finally have something to celebrate. It's freedom for me and my kids. Mm -hmm. What will this allow you to do? Oh my God, this will allow me to, to drive, <laughs> with, to get my driver license, to work legally, even to get, to go to Mexico and come back. When she opened the letter today and, and Minerva got her green card, I mean, the joy on her face, I, I haven't seen her smile like that in three years, like I saw her smile today. So that just warms my heart. But it's not over yet. Minerva still has to apply for full citizenship without any restrictions, and that may not happen until 2022. In Winston-Salem, Margaret Johnson, WXII 12 News. Margaret, thank you for your years-long work on that report. Now, looking ahead, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is expected to go on as scheduled. But don't expect to see those thousands of fans like your usual TV screen shows us every year. Organizers say they're still trying to figure out how to make the parade even work with coronavirus restrictions, but says it's a go. We do know the New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio says they're still planning to have it in some capacity. The mayor says some components will be virtual. We expect to hear more about this parade in the fall. Warning, parents, if you bought your kids a water gun this summer, take a look. Make sure it's not one of these. More than 52,000 Hasbro water guns have been recalled for ear concerns. They were sold at Target. The Super Soaker XP20 and 30 have stickers on them that contain lead, ED concerns. It can be toxic if ingested. Now, if you have this toy, you should take it from your children immediately and get in touch with the company for a refund. Again, that company is Hasbro. If you have sun allergies or burn ears easily, there's a product to help you enjoy the sun while being safe. Take a look. This is a blow up bathing suit 2020 didn't have that one on my bingo card either the suit is made from latex sheeting that has three valves that allow you to inflate and deflate yourself that is hilarious it was created by a spanish artist he says he's been allergic to the sun since childhood and he wanted to just make a way to create a possibility for him to be out in the sun or at the pool with no sun exposure you know what, where there's a will, there's a way, and someone just wants to say, you know what, I just want to go to the pool, I want to go to the beach, just like everybody else, and there you go, making possibilities happen. It does look silly, but I think it's very effective, so we love a little ingenuity. Oh, you're right about one thing, it looks silly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy swimming by with the safety pin. Boop. Oh, you're that guy? <laughs> oh, you would be. Why not? Or you could swim I'll, and not just... I'll be, and I'll be the guy in the back with the patch. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll, we'll work together. Yeah, you got to make sure you know how to swim still. Uh, I tell you what, uh, we've seen a few showers over the area overnight last night, and we got a lot to talk about here. We got the tropics too, so let's jump right in, shall we? We've got some uh, showers up over the mountains right now. Everyone else is pretty void and clear of any precipitation. There is a little fog across the region, but the rains that we've watched have been over areas of Sparta, Allegheny County, back out into West Jefferson, pushing into Grayson County in southern Virginia. Uh, there are a few heavy cells left in there as they continue to push off to the north, and they've had a little flooding issue uh, up there over the past 24 hours. So if you live in those areas, uh, localized flooding might be a, po a probability for you uh, to be a possibility in the next hour or so. These are some of the estimated rainfall rates, wide and various across the area from yesterday. Some of the highlights would include areas up into areas of Stokes County, just off to the south and east of Westfield. Uh, two and a half inches of rain and some areas got uh, upwards of an inch and a half in some other spots, and you may have gotten a lot in your own backyard too. Here's a water vapor imagery, and we've seen an upper mid-level low that's brought a lot of this moisture in. It's now pushing off to the north over out to our west over Tennessee right now, and we'll continue into the Ohio Valley with time, but this train of moisture should lighten up a little bit more as we go through the day today, so our probability for precipitation will be a lot less than it has been the past couple of days. Either way, if you get underneath a cell later on this afternoon, they could have some heavy downpours with them and flash flooding of potential because we've had so much rain over the course of the weeks in August. Damaging winds and large hail and severe activity looks to be in the low categories for later on today. Dense fog advisory until 9 o'clock for the triad area and point south. Not a big problem at the moment, but the further south you go, looks like the visibility is a little bit lower into areas of Asheboro uh, and into Davidson County too. Mid 70s already down east, 70 here in the Piedmont. It's going to be a muggy day today. Our high temperatures with just some scattered activity into the mid 80s. We'll start off tomorrow up at about 70 uh, or around 70 tomorrow morning with a little fog around and then tomorrow afternoon temperatures will get into the mid 80s as well with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Here's Laura. Winds at 40 miles per hour moving off to the west at 21. It will move across Puerto Rico and Hispaniola as we get through the day tomorrow. Then we'll come real close to Cuba. That will also de uh, depend on uh, or that will give an idea of what if it slows down a little bit or even weakens a little bit, if it goes across the land, it's out in the Gulf by Tuesday, uh, very early in the morning and could make landfall as we get on into the day on Thursday. That's the one that we may actually see some rainfall from late in the week. We'll see about that. The models don't have a great handle on it once it gets up over the northern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Then this is Marco north north winds at 12 miles per hour. It's a little stronger than Laura with winds at 45 miles per hour uh, moving off to the north northwest. It will continue in that form and possibly make landfall as we go on into the day on uh, early Wednesday morning uh, and then Wednesday afternoon, Alara may very well make its landfall along the Gulf Coast back out to the east of that. So we got a couple storms out there. We'll have to watch almost unprecedented when we see these. We've never had two hurricanes in the Gulf at, uh, at one time. That's never happened, at least not since records have been kept for 150 years or so. Mid 80s this weekend. We get hotter later this week near 90. The chance of storms falls off and we may see some tropical moisture in here by Thursday and Friday. We watch.
Now at 655, if you're struggling to sleep with everything going on lately, there are apparently five yoga poses that can help if you do them before going to bed. The first pose is reclining big toe pose. Lifting one leg up and one leg down, hold on behind the calf or the hamstring and breathe. Hold for 30 seconds and then switch sides. Pose number two is lizard pose. This is great for stretching out the hip flexors that often get really, really tight during the day if you're sitting at a desk. The third pose is bound angle pose. Feet together, knees apart, lift your chest and fold forward. Remember to always breathe in and out through your nose throughout this series. That's a very soothing and calming breath. The fourth pose is pigeon pose. We're really getting into the glutes here and we're breathing to release any tension in the hips. Finally, we've got legs up the wall. In our case, legs up the headboard. <laughs> legs are elevated higher than the hips, allowing the blood to rush down and calming the nervous system. Good night. Good night. Uh, mid 80s for today and tomorrow chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms not as plentiful as we've had the past couple of days. We'll get hotter later this week up near 90 by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday. We may see some tropical rains in here as we get in towards the end of the week. We'll have to watch for that and adjust our forecast as we go through this week. Don't go far. We're going to be right back.